It's Monday, November 8th, 2021, and it is 5, 5.08, <laughs> at least on my computer. It's 5.08 p.m. Um, <clears throat> Mike, can you please read the open meeting floor requirements? Sure. sure. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon. This monthly meeting of the Fall River Housing Authority Board of Commissioners is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Charlie Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. The order implemented a state of emergency in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a direct result of the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order, which you can find posted on mass.gov, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so that reasonable public access is afforded and the public can follow along with the deliberations of this meeting. This meeting will include time for public comment and resident comment as noted on the agenda. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this board. The public is encouraged to follow along used, using the posted agenda. Each vote taken in this meeting will require a roll call vote and the regular standard um, open meeting law language that we read would be personal to the open meeting law. Any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Attendees are further advised that the Fall River Housing Authority uh, is making a recording of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Sousa. Martha, will you take a roll call for us, please? Chairwoman Sahadi? Here. Vice Chair Underhill? Here. Commissioner Burns? Absent so far. Commissioner Tache? Present. Commissioner Bentley? Here. Do we have any citizens' input this evening? Mary Patrick Higgins, I'd just like to uh, say that the uh, maintenance people here at the Fall River Housing Authority at the Executive Towers over here on uh, Roberson Street did a wonderful job with the snow removal, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. We do have to definitely do try hard. Any other citizens wanting to speak this evening? I don't see any. Um, do we have any resident input this evening? evening Mary everything's good everything's good Ed yeah good good okay item two on the agenda is the minute minutes of the annual meeting held on January 11th 2021 the recommended action is to accept the minutes Reverend motion Mike? to accept mission on to help Second, Second Commissioner Bentley. Thank you. <clears throat> Martha, roll call, please. Commissioner Underhill. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Commissioner Bentley. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Tache. Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi. Yes. I'm not sure if Commissioner Bentley is frozen. Oh, it looks kind of like it. Yep. How do you unfreeze that? Pretty cold outside. <laughs> that's, the, that's the cornball joke of the day. <laughs> Let me give her a call. Yeah, because now we don't have her at all. We only have a black screen now. Technology, it's just Okay, she is having some computer issues. She's going to try to fix them quickly. If not, she'll call in. Okay, so we'll move on for now. Um, item three is bills and communications. Everyone has the vouchers in their packet. Do I have a motion to accept the vouchers as presented? Move to accept. Second, Commissioner Burns. 
Any discussion or comments? Hearing none, Martha, please. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Item four are the management reports in your packet are the seven reports that we normally get. Report number one is the applications. Number two is the occupancy report. Three is the tenants accounts receivable reports. Four is the work order report. Five is the monthly section eight voucher activity report. Six is the monthly personnel count and seven is the director of modernization's monthly report. We have a um, you, um, of our staff with us this evening. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Hearing no questions, do I have a motion to accept the reports as presented? So moved. Second, Commissioner Underhill. Commissioner, yep, Commissioner Tache. Yes. Commissioner Underhill. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi. Yes. Item five are the financial reports. Five A is the monthly financial report. Five B is the state quarterly operating statements for the fiscal year end, ended 12 21 20. And I mean, that's supposed to be 31, sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. And I read it just as you presented it. And mm. item C is the state monetization report for the same period, 12, 31, 20. Um, <clears throat> Melissa Mello is here with us this evening. So if anyone has any questions of her. I would, uh, this is Commissioner Burns, I would just ask, uh, Melissa, if there's anything that you would like to um, highlight with us. Hi, good evening. Um, there isn't a lot to cover this month, um, Commissioner Burns. Um, we are running all of our programs out of surplus, um, with the exception of our 689 program. That particular um, program has one location that's had some higher than normal maintenance expenses for some projects, some small projects that needed to be done. Um, but otherwise, you know, any of the material variances that you're seeing on any of those reports are really related to COVID expenses that were not in the budget. Um, and that, but from an operating standpoint, we haven't really seen anything significant or out of the ordinary. Um, and then the only thing, other thing I would note on the DHCD state reports, um, you know, those uh, for purposes of Commissioner Bentley, I know she's new and, and maybe hasn't seen those. Um, those reports are essentially the same thing that you're seeing in the monthly financials that we typically um, see every month, but they're in a different format and those are submitted to the state via their portal. Um, and it's kind of in their own designated format. Um, but again, it's the same, same data. Um, and the state program has um, solely been, uh, been seeing some improvements now that we have our um, our gateway grant for Maple Gardens that has helped take some of the pressure off uh, our maintenance expenses that we were incurring um, as a result of vacant units that were coming offline that needed to be repaired. A lot of those are being now covered under that gateway grant. Okay, good. Thank you. Melissa, this is Mary. So on the expenses that are unbudgeted, the EPA's money or the COVID expenses that are unbudgeted, you're tracking those separately for purposes of reimbursement under um, one of the CARES programs? Yes, yes, we have been, um, we have detailed um, COVID tracking by sort of like expense category, you know, for the cleaning, the sanitation, the security, um, any of the PPE that we've purchased. Um, and those line items have all been, um, you know, separately tracked. Okay. Um, when are you submitting those for reimbursement? We have been right along. Um, we've had, we've essentially, uh, we've been trying to keep it in such a format that we have um, like a monthly recap of those expenses. And so that we're drawing down on a monthly basis versus um, sort of having to go back and, and 
reinvent that wheel and, and put a report together after the fact because we are required to you know have that backup and documentation readily available so um, we continue to draw down on a monthly basis and then we've got um, some expenses that were that covered a, a much larger period because they were smaller in nature meaning like our payroll related expenses for our maintenance guys that were doing overtime and those are all being done as one um, one drawdown for a, a chunk of time because they were you know rather small if you looked at them on a monthly basis Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners on the financial report? <laughs> Hearing none, none. Do I have a motion to accept the reports as presented? Commissioner Burns, motion to accept the report as presented. Commissioner Bentley, second. Thank you. Martha? Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Next item on the agenda is an update from our executive director. Yes, good evening. Uh, the first item I wanted to quickly just mention is that we received the renewal of our FSS grant. Uh, the amount's 142000 and it's, it's a very great program. Uh, it's been successful for the past year, uh, years, excuse me. <clears throat> and for those of you unfamiliar with the FSS, which stands for Family Self-Sufficiency, what it does is it encourages and assists our residents in achieving some of their life goals, if you will, such as maybe buying a home or getting an education. And what the program does is as residents uh, increase their income, instead of having a portion of that go to their rent, it allows them to put that into an escrow account. Uh, then once they complete that program, uh, they can access the escrow funds uh, to fulfill their goal. Uh, so it's a, a very um, useful and beneficial program for and to the residents. So we're very happy to uh, have received that again. Uh, the next item tonight, uh, again, this is mainly for information. Uh, HUD did contact us to see if we were interested in having free technical assistance, and that's something they don't usually do, to determine if we wanted to uh, implement a RAD program or if we had any interest. Uh, RAD stands for Rental Assistance Demonstration. Now, the terminology is uh, a little mis misnomer, misleading, but essentially what the goal of RAD is to do is to revitalize any distressed public housing, any specific sites uh, that are out there, and to provide financial sustainability moving forward. And it's built on the premise, if you will, that the uh, assurity of receiving public housing funds in the future uh, is, is always up to Congress, whereas the Section 8 program, the voucher program, is uh, fairly sustainable, I guess, as far as HUD envisions it. And what RAD does is, through this conversion of a site of sites, once it's done, that site then would go into a Section 8 model, whether it's tenant-based or uh, project-based. And basically it could be privatized so that a mix of loans and grants could be used to renovate the project, uh, put in reserves, and then the Section 8 payment uh, means it would operate pretty much like a private landlord. So any monies brought into the site would have to be used for maintenance uh, and any renovations going uh, forward. Uh, so my thought was that as an authority, why not be open to seeing what this assistance could provide us, what kind of information. So myself, the deputy executive director, and a few of the directors uh, were in a Zoom conference about a week ago with the consultant. And she is uh, reconvening a meeting this Friday uh, to discuss her results after looking at our sites. And, and uh, we're gonna listen to her recommendations. And, and it's a very complex process too, because we have to take into account that we 
as a public housing authority have a lot of liabilities on our books, such as OPEB and pension. And if we were to I use the word privatize, which is, is a misnomer too, because it would be section eight, but would those liabilities go over to that new entity? Um, my gut feel is they would not. So that means they would have to be absorbed by the remaining public housing programs. Uh, so uh, given that we are in a unionized environment, it just, it just may not work in principle, but again, we, we do want to have an open mind uh, and just see what, what can come of it. So, I will keep you updated. Certainly nothing would be done as far as committed to unless I talked with the board. Uh, next, we're having all our managers and supervisors attend a webinar, webinar on management training. Mass Nara will be uh, hosting this. And some of the topics, uh, just to give you an overview, understand the knowledge, skills, and competencies, competencies needed for successful supervision principles and steps in effective time management, motivation, delegation, manage diversity and avoiding discrimination, assessing performance problems to identify appropriate action, conducting performance evaluation. So I, I think it's a, a, a good thing for the authority and those employees. So we're going to have about 25 employees attend a webinar and it will be uh, over, a, I believe they're offering two different sessions so we don't have all our managers uh, online at one time. So again, I think that would be great value to them and to the housing authority. Uh, finally, as an update on COVID-19, uh, I just wanted to give you some figures to start with. Uh, we have had, since the beginning of COVID, 30 employees that had contracted the virus. This is going back to last March. And then another 16 who have been quarantined to the contact with someone who tested positive. And as we all know, unfortunately, and uh, you know, tragically, we did have one employee pass away after contracting the virus. But it's important, I think, we can't just say the conclusion that everyone um, became infected here at Housing Authority. Uh, anecdotally, I think it was only a handful. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to update you with that. As far as the public housing residents, last week, uh, there were no reported cases on site. So that was a great number. Since the beginning of the year, we've had about two infections per week and maybe two quarantines per week. And, and all that information is anecdotal. Again, we don't have any uh, specific system to track actual occurrences or there's no one reporting to us, but, but it's important because this way we can inform maintenance and administration of this in case they have to go into that, that unit where a tenant has contracted COVID-19 or is currently being quarantined. And uh, I, th I think uh, you all know a few weeks ago, the governor announced the availability of uh, vaccination programs. And unfortunately, the initial plan for individuals was in phase two, tier one, if you will. Uh, the initial plan was for residents age 65 and over and all employees, but a few days after that was, if you will, rescinded or uh, moved to the phase two tier two. So that's uh, the, the next step we're going to. But what we're working on right now is vaccinating those 75 and older. And uh, last week we, we did receive a communication from the mayor's office with that Health First Community Center was interested in partnering with the authority. Um, so we've scheduled this clinic uh, it's going to take place this Thursday at the Lady of Lights Band Facility on Quarry Avenue. I believe the number is 664. Uh, but definitely many thanks to the mayor's office for initiating this effort and putting us in touch uh, with Health First. And I'd also like to thank Tony Rodericks. He's the owner of the Lady of Lights Band Facility for enabling our clinic to take place there. Uh, Mr. Rodericks is offering it uh, without charge and uh, met with his staff there to go over some preliminary planning for setting up the facility. So uh, many thanks there. This process of setting up a clinic has just, it's been a lot of work to say the least. It's, you know, if you think about it, it's very amazing how flexible the authority, the authority is, excuse me, as an organization when, when we have all these new challenges or needs that are 
essentially outside of our role of housing. And I think it also shows how dedicated we have employees in tackling the challenges and getting whatever work needs to be done, done. We, we do have 293 elderly residents over age 75, and they all had to be contacted. Then we had to get the paperwork out to them, get a response, follow up, find out if they were interested. And all of this took place in about a week. And I'm happy to let you know tonight, as about of a, an hour ago, we have 150 residents that are interested now in having a vaccine. And that's 50% of the 300 residents, 75 or older in the population, which is, from what I understand, about six or 7% higher than what other clinics have been achieving. So I think that's a statement in itself so the commitment and the, and the effort our staff made to get these elderly residents registered. So, and in that, I, in doing so, I, I really would like to uh, recognize and thank the Assistant Director Deb Morissette, her staff members, Jack Machado, Judy Medeiros, Rita LeBeau, and Joey De Silva, who have tire tirelessly been working to get this done. And they even came in on Saturday. So um, you know, we're very pleased with the effort that has been put in and the results so far. Um, at least 40 of those residents should be driving to the site on their own and we will be providing transportation for the other 110 residents. We are working with providers now. Our big stumbling block, frankly, is getting transportation for uh, those uh, handicapped individuals, wheelchair accessible uh, is not a problem, but it's getting the vans for the, to enable the, a wheelchair or a scooter. Uh, we do have a couple leads, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of the agencies that historically have provided transportation because of COVID are not doing so. So um, we are working on that and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful we'll come through with something. Um, but. Um, we'll know probably within a day or so. And then uh, just in general, the next step, the age 65 and older residents, as well as the elderly, as well as the disabled residing in an elderly disabled site and all the employees of the authority, we are working, uh, we are looking, I shouldn't say, we're, we're looking to have that done once the governor authorizes that. And once we provide or find a partner who's willing to provide the vaccinations, our main goal though there will be to have it on site because it would be an enormous challenge, I think, to mobilize, you know, uh, another 700, 800 residents into one location. So um, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do that. It's just having the governor authorize the program and then us finding a partner. So that concludes the report tonight, but I'd like to just ask the Deputy Executive Director if he has anything he'd like to add. Kevin, is there anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, no, just exactly what you were saying. We've been on the phone and on the computer, um, internal staff and, and uh, uh, people at Health First and at the Our Lady of Light Hall and just coordinating the transportation, getting a, a a hard count of how many residents want to participate and, and we should have that final count tomorrow which will allow us to uh, better coordinate the uh, transportation efforts. Um, so this is going to be uh, the first run for us with one of these clinics and um, you plan and prepare as best you can but I'm, I'm sure you know there'll be something that comes up but uh, we have uh, multiple staff members that will be there that uh, uh, that are bilingual. Um, Deborah has been working hard on that. We're going to have a couple of staff members that speak Portuguese and, and a couple of staff members that speak Spanish, just to kind of uh, offer any uh, interpretation uh, for some of the residents if need be, and uh, just assist the residents off the bus, back on the bus, uh, steer them in the right direction. Um, there'll be a registration uh, when you walk in. To the right will be the vaccination stations and uh, circling around an observation area. And then after that, there'll be um, uh, 
circle back uh, to get back on the bus. And, uh, hopefully it, it, it goes well. <laughs> so we'll see what happens on Thursday. Thank you, Tim and Kevin as well. And, and thank you everyone that's been working on this project. I know it's been um, very time consuming to try to get it all coordinated and coordinated with all of our residents. So um, I'm happy that we were able to partner with first and that we will be able to at least um, in one location have all of our residents that are 75 or over that are interested in these vaccines um, be able to get it this Thursday. Jim and Sahadi, this is Tim McCoy. Can, can I just mention, and I apologize if, if my two predecessors and colleagues already mentioned it, but I would like to recognize Julie Allman at Health First, um, who you know advised everyone in the city when she received the, the vaccination. She is the CEO over there. I am on the board of Health First, and I just wanted to uh, let our commissioners know that she was also, she was so pivotal uh, in this process, so thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, no problem, and, and that was that was great um, to mention Julie as well. Okay, moving on to new business. Um, item one is the physical needs assessment report. This is for information only. Um, Arrows, can you with information on this report? Uh, actually, Commissioner, I'd like Kevin uh, Spardella to address this, uh, given it's mod related. Perfect. Kevin? So the physical needs assessment is, is strongly recommended by HUD that housing authorities conduct this every five years. So following the bid process, we advertise for proposals from which usually architectural engineering firms. And once we award the contract, over, over a few months, they'll come out and assess uh, all our federal properties um, to, to assess it and appraise the, uh, you know, the useful life of our, our mechanical systems, our roofing systems, uh, building exteriors. And what that does, that assists the housing authority, us in particular in the modernization department in putting together um, mod project, projects to, uh, through the capital funds program. Um, but this particular year, it's twofold because as the executive director was mentioning about the RAD program, if, if a housing authority is, is gonna enter into these agreements or uh, wanna go forward with a RAD, you have to have a physical needs assessment first. So um, by having this done, uh, it helps the Fall River Housing Authority with mod projects through modernization and also as we explore uh, the different options with the RAD program, um, we, we have that done as well. Uh, so uh, it's done every five years. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Spadella? Hearing none, we'll move on to item B. Item B is the number one for the building envelope for phase two at eight tower apartments. The change order is for an extension of 179 days to the contract period. And there is no change to the contract amount. We have a motion to accept this change order. Commissioner Bentley, motion to accept change order. Commissioner Burns, second. Commissioner Underhill. Any questions or comments? This delay is just uh, COVID related. That's what we have uh, in the paperwork. Yes, it is. There's, there's no monetary uh, ads or deducts. It's just strictly because of COVID. We had to shut down, um, start up, shut down. So it, it really uh, delayed this project quite a bit. It had a big impact on it. All right, thank you. Martha, can you take a roll call? Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairman Sahadi? Yes. Item C is, 
is the certificate of completion consolidation for the exterior building envelope repairs phase two at Bates Towers <clears throat> Apartments. The recommended action is to approve the certificate of completion. Motion approved, Commissioner Burns. Second, Commissioner Second. Andale. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Jones Party? Yes. Item B is the commission to advertise for bids for the boiler upgrades at Cognitive Materials Towers. The recommended action here is to approve the advertisement. Commissioner Burns, uh, approve, uh, recommendation to approve, motion to approve, I'm sorry. Do have a second? Commissioner Bentley, second. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Abstain. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Jones Hardy? Yes. Madam Chair, excuse me. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Uh, if, if I may, if, if you, if, if, at the pleasure of the board, if they want to take items E through I, uh, seeing that they're all uh, recommendations for approval for the advertising, and there are no issues that the board wants to discuss for any of them, or, I mean, we could we could take them individually, but the board wants to take them up as one, just for the purposes of saving some time. Do you need a motion to approve E through I as a whole, unless uh, unless there's disagreement? Is that what you said? I think, I think what we should do is take a motion to read through E through I and then one vote. Okay. So do I have a motion to combine them? Motion to combine E through I. Oh, Commissioner Burns. Second, Commissioner Bentley. Thank you. Sorry. Commissioner <coughs> Burns. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairman Sahadi? Yes. Item E, the Commission to advertise for bids for smoke and carbon monoxide alarm replacements at multiple sites. Item F is Commission to advertise for bids for bathroom improvements in heritage heights. G is Commission to advertise for bids for handicapped bathroom improvements at multiple sites. H is commissioned to advertise for bids for roof replacement and building bids at O'Brien Apartments. And I is commissioned to advertise for bids for apartment electric panel replacements at multiple sites. The recommended action is to approve each of these for advertisement. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Commissioner Andale. Second, Commissioner Burns. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Joe and Mr. Hardy? Yes. Item two is miscellaneous. 2A is lead paint certificate, lead based paint rather, certificate of completion. The requirement for, by DHCD certifying that the housing authority is compliant with all applicable state and federal lead based paint notification laws for the fiscal year 2021. The recommended action is execution of the certificate by each of the commissioners and by the executive director. Um, I sent an email to DHCD asking if. If we could just have uh, you, Chairwoman Sahadi, and, and Mr. Barrow sign it, or do I have to take it all over the city? So I'm waiting to hear back from Melanie Loveland on whether I have to get everyone's signature. Okay, at this point, um, we table it. Move this along. Can we have a motion um, to? have it signed by the executive director and myself as the chairman and or by each of the commissioners to HCC make that requirement. 
Commissioner Burns, uh, make that motion to uh, either have it signed by Chairwoman Sahadi and, and the Executive Director, or if DHCD tells us each individual. So, whatever they whatever their recommendation is. I have a second. Second, Commissioner Ando. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Underhill. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Yes. Commissioner Tache. Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi. Is residential emergency security guard services as it relates to COVID 19. The recommended action is to ratify permission to continue security guard coverages at our elderly high rises with best security at an hourly rate of $22.64 and or an overtime rate of $33.96 on February 20th, 2021. Kevin, do you want to speak on this at all? I can speak on that. I'm sorry, was that question? I think Mike is going to speak. Yeah, I, I, uh, oh. I can speak on that, Commissioner Sahadi. That That is uh, based on a, uh, car, a current contract that we had that expired in December of uh, 2021. I had gone out for emergency quotes on that particular contract. We have the, uh, the entire contract cost was $106,036. We were able to do 25% above that based on the 30B requirements. And in the next line item, we're going to be um, basically asking the board to just uh, approve the fact that we're going to go through uh, to 2021 um, for a total amount not to exceed the 20%, which is $26,509. There's gonna be another I a line item on there which would uh, request that uh, the board uh, agree to having Mr. McCoy go out and bid the project so that it's not under an emergency nature anymore. Which is item C, correct? Correct. So given the basic total contract uh, cost, we're, we're uh, bringing that uh, formerly from 106, to 132, 132,000. And if I may, Madam Chair, uh, this whole contract is uh, for security relating to COVID going back to when we were restricting access and requiring visitors to log in. Uh, it's covered under the CARES Act funding. In the last couple months though, management has felt that we did not need an extensive amount of coverage we were contracting for on a daily basis so we have reduced that now to i believe and correct me if i'm wrong like five or six hours per day versus eight hours or something of that magnitude so um you know i think once once we get to june given where the vaccine situation is you know we eventually intend to eliminate this and just go back to our regular security. But we just figure it may be more prudent to continue it for a few more months at reduced hours. That's correct. We had the, uh, this was when the uh, health department issued their uh, requirement that no visitors uh, uh, enter at the five senior, senior high rises. And it was 10 hours per day per site, uh, seven days a week. We reduced it to five hours per day per site and that was uh, that allowed us to stretch the time frame out through February 20th. So that's good. Do I have a motion to ratify permission to continue with the coverage, the security coverage? Commissioner Burns, motion to ratify continuing security coverage. Commissioner Bentley, second. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Item C is the uh, Residential Emergency Security Guide Services COVID-19. Um, this is the service that um, the scope of recommended action here is permission to advertise for written quotes for a 120-day contract period from March through June. Permission to advertise, Commissioner Underhill. 
second for Bugs. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Joan Sahadi? Yes. Item D is the Integrated Pest Management Service contract. The recommended action is to award a three year contract to AND Professional Pest Control Company in the amount of $355,680 with two separate and clear options to renew. Mr. McCall, do you want to speak on that? Uh, Chairwoman Sahadi, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, they have won our previous, I believe, two contracts um, management. We did an RFP process to solicit the need for this contract. Um, Mr. Majewski, uh, Director of Facilities, and Deb Morissette uh, were willing to serve as evaluators. Uh, they've been comfortable with the company. Uh, and coincidentally, and also fortunately, they also offered the cheapest price over the three years. Um, and I would like to add, I know our financial people, um, I believe Melissa would be pleased with this. Um, we've had the same price from them now going forward, you know, for another three to five years. I believe we've had the same price in place for the last four. So we have some cost certainty, certainty with the contract also. Excellent. Do I have a motion to award this contract to A&G? Commissioner Bentley, motion to award contract. Second, Mr. Burns. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Norma Zahadi? Yes. Item E is a trash container and pickup services. The recommended action is to award a one-year definite quantities contract to Republic Services for the rental of one 30-yard container to be placed at 201 Eddy Street and the disposal of services of bulky items and mattresses with a price breakdown as follows. One-time delivery charge of $75 handling fee charge of $125. Mattresses will be $25 each, and the both items will be $120 per ton. Mr. McCoy, can you add to this at all? Um. Chairwoman Sahadi, I'll, I'll add what I can. Um, you may recall, uh, I, I don't want to give too much of a history lesson. I know that uh, we're pressed for time. The, um, a couple of years ago, we were, we were blindsided by cumulative purchases of one of our uh, plumbing vendors. So since then, I do my best to work with Melissa and her staff uh, in getting the um, financial reports, the month to month. And we're about uh, there is a there is a trash container that has been used for overflow bunky uh, overflow bulky items um, and and mattresses here at 201 facilities. Well, fortunately, again, in, in working with Melissa's staff, um, I noticed that the vendor that had been used uh, by our maintenance crew had crept over 10,000 for the fiscal year, which would ring the bell for soliciting quotes. So I solicited quotes from uh, four vendors, the, the current vendor who was providing the containers and three additional ones. Uh, and I am pleased that we got a, a cheaper price. So I don't anticipate in a, um, in a fiscal year this exceeding you know, $12,000, uh, uh, but I'm happy um, that again, we caught it. Uh, you know, working uh, uh, two departments working together because the the price of the can itself uh, will end up being will will end up being cut in half. So I'm I'm pleased that we caught it and we're going to save some money going forward. Excellent. Does anyone have any questions of Tim? 
Hearing none, do I have a motion to award the contract to Republic Services? Motion to award the contract, Commissioner Burns. Second, Commissioner Underhill. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Tashe? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Item F. Uh, Chair, Chairwoman Sahadi, could I please recognize Lori Amarantes, by the way, as the staff member I was working with? Thank you. Certainly. Item F is for the maintenance tractor. Um, the recommended action here is um, permission to advertise for the purchase of a John Deere subcompact snow removal tractor. Uh, Commissioner Sahadi, if I may just start this. Uh, if you recall, a couple of years ago, we had purchased two of these tractors. Uh, there are many cab uh, vehicles where uh, they're extremely valuable and useful in snow removal at our larger sites. I believe one is at Sunset Hill and the other now is at um, Father Diaferio. So uh, I'm, I know the maintenance staff and Ed Majewski can attest to this or he can even fill in a lot more details, but he is extremely pleased with their performance and their assistance in snow removal. Uh, the estimated about cost would be about 25,000 if uh, we're successful in uh, purchasing this or um, you're approving the advertisement of it, I should say. Uh, most likely this would not be delivered until the summer, so more in use for next year, but it's a possibility uh, we could get it this year. But again, I think it's been uh, a great asset to our snow removal efforts, which traditionally have you know, been done manually uh, and with some antiquated small equipment. So uh, I just know it's working out well and I, I think it's a good good value for the money and an assistance to the staff and, and our efforts to keep our properties uh, safe during snowstorms. But again, if you need more information, I'm sure the facilities director, Ed Majewski, could attest to uh, the performance of the other two uh, vehicles. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yes, this, these tractors have made uh, everything a lot easier on the guys' backs, and it's the uh, same type of uh, action, does the snow removal and also the salting at the same time over at Sunset Hill, which is where we've really gotten our use out of it because of the hills and stuff like that. So it's been a very good, it's been a very good tool for us. With that heard, do I have a Permission to advertise? Commission, commission to advertise. advertise. Second, Commissioner Underhill. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Item three, our personnel matters. A, modernization office coordinator position. The recommended action is to ratify the appointment of Tammy Carnero. Do we have a motion? Motion to ratify the appointment of Tammy Carnero. Commissioner Burns. Second, Second Commissioner, Commissioner Burns. Burns. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. Item B is an inventory asset data entry clerk position. The recommended action is to ratify in house posting and outside advertising if necessary. A motion to ratify the posting. Commission to advertise, Commission Underhill. Second, Commissioner Bentley. Commission Underhill. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Tache. Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi. Item C is maintenance mechanic one slash floater position three. The recommended action is to ratify the appointment of <clears throat> Michael Cavello, Stephen Sampson, and Ken Landy. 
motion to ratify the appointments made by Commissioner Burns. Second, Commissioner Underhill. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Gilman Sahadi? Yes. And item D is a warehouse maintenance custodian position. The recommended action here is to ratify the in house posting and outside advertising if necessary. Motion to ratify in-house posting and outside advertising, if necessary, made by Commissioner Burns. Second, Commissioner Bentley. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Bentley? Yes. Commissioner Underhill? Yes. Commissioner Tache? Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi? Yes. At this point, I don't believe there is any other business to come before us this evening. So can we entertain a motion to, oh, yeah. sorry, uh, to adjourn. sorry. Sounds like somebody dropped like something on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Underhill. Commissioner. Commissioner Underhill. Yes. Commissioner Bentley. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Tache. Yes. Chairwoman Sahadi. Yes. That's all we have for this evening. So good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.